Hi there. In this video, we're going to expand on the shopping list video we created previously and add a rename button to it. So let's uh, let's dive into it. So I'm going to drag over a button over here. I'll put it next to the add button and the text will be rename. And then I will also rename it to be the rename button. Imagine that. So the concept of the rename button is that when you click on an item in the list view and you want to change its name, you can type in a new name up here and then click on rename. So why don't we go ahead and just run the app for a moment and get a feel for why we might want to be able to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and connect my AI companion. So just take a moment to scan the QR code. OK. So the app is about to come up. All right, there it is. So I've got a few of the items from last time. I've got my bananas, apples, and raspberries. And so let's say I want to add strawberries. Okay, so I just added Starberries. Kind of a cool name, doesn't describe uh, an actual fruit that I know of. So what I would want to do is have a way to select it and then enter in the actual name that I want and hit the rename button to do that. So let's program this, let's make this happen. So let's go over to the blocks and we're going to do when the rename button is clicked. And structurally, this is going to look very, very similar to what we did with the delete button to the point that I'm going to copy over these blocks. We're going to be editing them quite a bit, though. Just copy them over as a starting point and see what we can use. We're going to set up our local variable items to be the elements of our list view. And if the selection index is greater than zero, we're only going to do this if something's been selected. Then what is it that we need to do? So let me move these out and we'll incrementally add things back in as we can. So over here we have used insert a list item or no, we used uh, add. Sorry, we add used add items to list. We have used remove item and now we're going to use replace item. So we want to replace from our list of items the item that is at our selection index and we want to replace it with what is in our text box, like so. Now, once we've done this, then we need to do our updates. So we're going to set the uh, list view elements to get items. We're going to set the selection index to zero, and then we're going to store them in um, our database, in our database. Oh, and we're also going to uh, clear out the shopping item name as well. So how does this work? Well, let's go ahead and open up the app. So I've got Starberries, which I really want to have as strawberries. So I've got strawberries in the text box. I click rename and my starberries are now strawberries. Um, as I had intended. <clears throat> Looking this over, uh, we can ponder, you know, would it be possible to write a function here to simplify some of the common code? And it's a little bit tricky because, um, you know, there's some limits on what we're able to do with functions in App Inventor. But we might notice that once we've performed an action on our list, all three of these have a lot in common. So we always set uh, the list view one elements to get items. We always uh, store that in the database. 
Sometimes we blank out the shopping item name text box. Sometimes we reset the selection index to zero. You know, and it's interesting because it really wouldn't hurt anything if we always did those things. And so, in other words, if um, deleting something, clearing that text box isn't going to cause a problem. If I'm adding something, setting my selection index to zero isn't going to cause a problem. And so that means I could really do everything in a procedure. So that's what I'm going to go ahead and define now. So I'm going to call this procedure update list. And it will have as a parameter the list that we just modified. And so we're going to add an input. And I will call this input updated list. So once the list has been updated, we can do all of these things. We can set the shopping shipping item name to blank. We can set um, the list of elements instead of to get items, it'll be to get be to the updated list that we pass in as a parameter. We can set our selection index to zero and we can store our elements in the database. So what is this going to allow us to do? Well, we can drag this away and then put in a call to the update list procedure with items. So you might remember we initialized it to what was in the list view, so that made a, a local copy of it. <clears throat> then we replaced in our local copy uh, the new text we'd put in. And then once we've done that, we're going to jump down here to this newly defined block update list, and that'll clean everything up. And we can do the same thing over here. So once we have removed an item, we can call update list and then we'll do all of those things. And likewise, once we have added an item, we can call update list and it'll do those things. And so in fact, I'm gonna change my layout just a little bit, uh, just to make everything easy to see. All right, let's test it, make sure it still works. So, uh, you know, Quickly close the app, and then reopen the app, and scan the QR code. And it is coming up. All right, so of course, thanks to the database, we've got all the items that we previously had. Um, I'm going to begin first by adding another item. I am going to add chocolate pudding to the list. So I want to add chocolate pudding. So chocolate pudding is now on my list. Now that I think about it, I don't really want chocolate pudding. What I really want is chocolate ice cream. So I have typed chocolate ice cream into the box and I've selected chocolate pudding and I hit rename and I now have chocolate ice cream. And finally, I see some apples. I put them in my shopping cart and I delete them, delete them from my shopping list. So everything still works great, um, but we've been able to clean up the code a bit and see, yeah, there's some standardized things that we want to do after every update. Um, which we do in this way, and there we are. So apps just a little bit more powerful, a little bit more useful. Thanks for watching.